Hey, everybody. I've got a special treat for you today. We're going to have a little pop-up podcast conversation with two of my favorite people in literally a 40-year span of broadcast radio. That's Spike O'Neill and Maura Gallucci. Welcome to the podcast. Nice hey, to guys. see you. <laughs> Yes, this is high tech. This is very cool. Um, we are uh, we are coming to you live from Las Vegas and two different places in Seattle. Thanks to Miracle Technology. We'd like to say thanks to Mike McMorrow Productions and um, his uh, boy wonder, I guess, Matthew, uh, for helping us put this together. Now, we haven't talked in a little while in this way, but what we used to do on the radio often involved talking about our families and um in fact our radio show was kind of a family we each over 25 years watched our children grow up and then some of them are having children at least mine uh and uh, and throughout history we've seen all of this happen in a in a changing world so tonight i thought we'd uh, tell a little bit of story time about our families and see where that leads in this improv discussion. As always, I'll start it off by the fact that I just spent four days with my six and eight year old granddaughters, Hazel, Hazel and Georgia. And um, my eyes were wide open to how different it is for them to be growing up. I mean, forget about me you know, us trudging miles in the snow to go to school, uh, but just how different it is their world compared to even my son's world. And uh, well, <clears throat> we were sitting on the couch Saturday night. I, I'll say this, they watch a lot of YouTube, a lot of shorts, like TikTok really? type shorts yeah, for yeah. little kids. And oh. um, Keith calls it the devil. <laughs> <laughs> but but here's the thing uh, that's what all the kids are doing so do you want to be the no fun parents i had no fun parents for a while uh, or do you want to be really strict or do you want to and i and keith land do this by the way and i think it's brilliant be so involved in talking with them about everything that they see that they ask tons of questions and, you know, you're sort of involved. I, I actually sat down for a day and for maybe an hour and a half watched YouTube shorts. And I, I was freaked out. <laughs> Did uh, you sit down for an hour and an hour, a day and a half later, you realize that you've been there for a day and a half? That's yeah, it actually, it can be that. And, it's, and by the way, as an adult going, well, they shouldn't be doing these shorts. Later, I find myself dumb scrolling Facebook yeah. comedian shorts and i go oh this affects all of us right so Absolutely. on a saturday night he asked hazel to pick out a movie and we all watched a movie and it was not barbie because we didn't go to the theater and it was not one of these blockbuster kids movies although been seeing those have you seen donkey kong yet no you guys don't have kids. I that just age. got the game. <laughs> no, no, our kids are our kids have aged out of those. And... Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. We'll get to what they're watching uh, after I tell you what we ended up watching and how it was so heartwarming and gave me a little hope. Hazel picked out "Father of the Bride 2, starring Steve Martin. Oh, <laughs> and I Diane love it. Keaton. I love it. And I'm like, I'm like, they're six and eight. Do they want to watch an old movie? And then it came on and the humor was so timeless and it was all positive about good relationships and loving your family that I sat there and watched and, and attention span, that was like a hundred minute movie and no one moved. Do you remember that movie, Spike? I'm trying to discern one from two. I mean, one was where they had the, uh, the wedding at Steve Martin's home, right? Martin Short right. is the wedding planner. Is he right. also, and, so what's different about two? Well, and, and by the way, spoiler alert, if it's this 30 year old movie, I'm not going to worry too terribly much. Yeah. Um, I mean, in 20 the, years, the kill time on spoilers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In the second uh, film, 
um, his daughter, who he married off, gets pregnant. And okay. Steve oh, Martin, of I course, do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. freaks yeah. out at the idea that they might have been having sex. You know, they've been married for a year. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, Diane Keaton, who I forget his, his, his character wife's name, is not feeling well. And she goes in and I think she's in her mid to late 40s and she's pregnant. Right. Wait, 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 wait. This is parenthood, right? Or is that no, just the same no, no, storyline? No, 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 no. Yeah, they, they, they they parenthood, got, and yeah. Mary Steenburgen gets pregnant in parenthood. Yeah, oh, right, right. Along right, with right, their right. daughter. I love that. Martha that Plimpton plays great. her daughter. Yeah. And Steve Martin Martha was in Plimpton, that one too. Martha Plimpton, Keanu Reeves. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's oh, yeah. right. And so you have a mother and daughter pregnant at the same time. And the same guy, uh, what was his name? Franz or Franck? did the yeah uh, martin short yeah, yeah. Martin, yeah. he's gonna do the baby oh. shower and it's just it's a whole bunch of freaking out but it's all around love stuff and um and the humor is always good-hearted all the way through and i, and I was watching this i'm like i haven't seen anything this good in a while and then it occurred to me today all of this stuff is on demand for every generation mm -hmm. In a hundred years, in a hundred years, kids could watch this movie. Yeah. Maybe. And uh, anyway, it warmed the heart because I felt like, and maybe a lot of generations feel like this. I felt like, uh, oh, the young people are appreciating Tony Bennett. You know what I mean? That, that there is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that, that our, our generation's art will still be big and survive and involve the young kids and, and hazel is the, your older granddaughter right yeah so she probably she, could take in a little bit more than than little little one yes did she ask, yes. Did, did, yeah. did, did, did george did, did did hazel or georgia ask about anything about it at the movie afterwards did you guys they I, I can't kids? remember us i can't remember one specific question but yes they ask and they'll ask a difficult question and you know it doesn't matter how difficult it is you get a well you did you your kids how old are your kids now more 18 and 16. so yeah i'm asking them the difficult questions now <laughs> 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 they have to explain things to me now <laughs> so Br bridget is younger she's 16 right yeah bridget just got her license and She's she's outdoor a lot, yeah. But and Finn she's is eighteen. Finn is eighteen. Just graduated from high school. He's got a job. <sighs> also, I don't see him very often anymore. But I just convinced him to vacuum today because he wants to take the car. So <laughs> still at home <laughs> for the time being. So they're so negotiating with your kids never ends, right? Always. Nope. Yeah, exactly. But. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they're they're good. They're both really good. Oh, uh, and so all of this new TikToky stuff is not really a fact. Like, do you still feel like you want to watch what they're consuming and have something to say about it, or have you let go? Um, I mostly know what they're watching. Uh, you know, Finn is Finn is into a lot of the uh, anime. He's been reading, and then and then they have these. Um, these these animated shorts, I think, and so he he really he likes that kind of stuff. If there's other stuff that I don't know, I mean, there's probably other stuff he hasn't telling me about. Eighteen, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, you know, they're both they're both you know on their phone all the time, all the time, yeah. okay. and it's yeah. Yeah, all the time, and it's yeah, it's it's kind of I feel like it's kind of beyond me now. So, and when we're eating dinner. That's can you can do you do say at the dinner set? How, what do you do? Do you have oh, a, like yeah. a basket you put them in? No, it's just like don't you know? But but I, you know, no phones at the dinner table. But then we'll we'll be having a conversation, and I wonder, and then the phones come out. Well, let me just find yeah. out, you know. And so that yes. that happens all the time. Well, you know, and then, when you have to do yeah. research, the no phone rule goes out the window because we just someone just asked a question. Exactly. Well, you wanted to know, mm. didn't you? Mm. <laughs>
Uh, at this age, uh, both driving? Both driving. Yeah. Yeah. Both Which is driving. nice. Oh, it saves me so much time. Yeah. <laughs> You remember, Bye-bye. right? I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Just yeah. Just be careful. Just be careful. Yep. Yeah. The car is the yeah. uh, the equivalent of the next babysitter. It's like they, they will yeah. take themselves where they want to go. They will do everything exactly. for themselves. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you don't worry. I, I, well, I know I do worry. Bridget went out to see the Barbie movie with friend, two friends the other night. And it was, they, they saw the midnight showing movie. So it's like, okay, I mean. It's fine. I mean, we let them do their thing until they show us that there's a reason, you know, they they shouldn't be going out at that time. So, so far, so good. Um, but um, I woke up at like 3.30 in the morning and she wasn't home. And I'm like, that's not, that's not right. <laughs> I know it's not that long. And so I, I text her and I wait a couple of minutes. Actually, I waited a couple of seconds <laughs> and I didn't hear from her. So I texted her friend. <laughs> Tell Bridget to text me back, please. And so she did. You she see the lo- did you see the little <laughs> cloud ball that showed she was reading your text? Well, uh, yes, but you know we have the tracking. You know, like I know where they are. They know where I am and where Andy is. Mm-hmm. Their dad, and so usually that's all good. But hers wasn't on. You know, her data wasn't on, and so of course, you know, I start imagining things, and uh, mm-hmm. it and it was all fine. She she got back to me right away. And then I, and she goes, yeah, well, we were just going to watch the sun come up. And I'm like, the sun, you know, so I'm speaking of information. I Google sunrise 534. I'm like, no, you're not. (laughs) I don't think you are. You're coming home right Um, now, please. (laughs) Yeah. Were there some submarine races scheduled somewhere, someplace Um, at 3 a.m.? She was with, she was just with somebody. So no, you know, that I don't think that was on the agenda, but it's like, you know, I sound like so much like my mom or my dad, mm-hmm. like, what do they need to be doing? What are they doing out at three 30 in the morning that they can't be doing at three 30 in the afternoon? <laughs> Plus That's I wild. wanted to go to sleep. You know, I wasn't going to sleep until I knew she was home. So yeah, yeah was funny. exactly. She, she rolls in, she rolls in 20 minutes later. Oh, it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's, I, I still think we're going to go watch the sunset. I'm like, or sunrise. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> but, but. Spike, when we were uh, doing the show and literally all of these kids were born or just toddlers uh, when we were doing the show, could you ever have imagined a time like what Maura just described, where as, uh, you know, as a parent, you would have a GPS tracking map that would show you where on the planet within three meters each of your yeah. family was and um an instant two-way communication which really didn't exist before the smartphone you know it's funny because we that kind of happened during the time that ryan our older was growing up on air right i can remember telling stories uh, on the show about getting up to when you leave for work at four thirty in the morning it's tough to sneak out for a kid to sneak out in the middle of the night. It's not like I'm sleeping until seven or eight in the morning. You know, I can remember, I can remember finding the, the, the classic body made of pillows in Ryan's bed and, and the, her, her bedroom window was open. Her bedroom window was open onto the back deck of the house. So I closed the window and locked it and went to work. <laughs> and she, you know, so she had to text me when she figured out that she couldn't get into the house. So self busting. The jig was um, but that being said, yeah. Um, do you remember when, and then evolve through tracking, do you remember when her phone got stolen? I do, and yes. I, and, I, and, you know, my, my daughter calls me in the panic on Sunday night at 1030. Uh, my phone got stolen. Somebody stole my phone from, you know, on, from Capitol Hill. I said, okay, hang on. And I, and, I, and I get on my where's my iPhone app, right, Maura, speaking about knowing where they are, right? And so I call her yeah. back on her friend's phone. Said, I can see your phone is on Broadway, moving north. Call the cops and tell them you know exactly where the phone is. Just call me back and, you know, oh, the cops won't come. They don't have the manpower. They don't, it's just a stolen phone. Remember, and, I, and I got on my Harley at 11 o'clock on a Sunday night and drove to Man. Seattle and Capitol Hill and got my, got my daughter's phone back. So, wow. you know, the, we, the, the, the first, the first uh, you, you know, with Ryan 
it was not knowing where they are and, you know, and mm. freaking out in the middle of the night. There's only the worst things. Not, nothing good happens after midnight, even though we all know better because we were out there and great shit happened after midnight, you know, <laughs> and then go, exactly. going to this, you know, dark, now Ryan's 34, you know, and, and you know, contemplating, contemplating, you know, whether she's going to be a mother someday. And she, she'd already resigned the fact that she'll never be able to buy a house in Seattle. She's already given up that dream. Um, I can't do that anymore. But, Dar- but Darby will be 20 this fall, you know, and, but, and she, it's, it's funny. Darby didn't want to get their license. You know, and, yeah, and kids are not is, kids are not as eager to get a driver's license. It used to be like the well, moment you were fifteen. Morris were, you yeah. Know. Well, now Morris actually, to get um, no, Spike, oh, actually, Finn, that's true. Finn only got his license a couple of months before Bridget did. He was the same way. Yeah. No rush. No yeah, rush yeah. at all. And I and I was happy to chauffeur them around because it to me that was a smaller price to pay than worrying. That they're out, yeah. you know, at 16, 17, making stupid decisions. Bunch of people piled them in the car. You know, all, yeah. the only experience yeah. I had drawn was the crap I pulled. So I, that was scared shitless. You know, yeah. And how many decisions. times have you had to say, you know, they don't do the same things that you do? <laughs> I've had that conversation yeah. in my head a few times. It's like, you may have been doing that kind of stuff, but they they aren't, you know. <laughs> yeah. They have bigger, yeah. bigger worries. Yeah. To deal with and you know when you say not well, doing they, they really this do, things, i'm curious because like for me I'll, anything that annoys me about my son all i have to do to shut myself up is go he's 38 what were you like at 38 i'm like oh never mind i apologize i yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i have to say right? yeah. because <laughs> exactly. yeah and the world uh the world is so much more complex now just to get yeah. by, to get along, and to um, to manage the multimedia museum of your life that so many young people run. I'm curious now, because yeah. I don't know your kids. Uh, Keith won't do Facebook. He do a little bit of Instagram. He is all work, does not get distracted by any of that stuff. Um, wow. I was big into Facebook for a while, and now I find it, less and less i've looked at tiktok and um it just looks like a bowl of sugar to me that i shouldn't eat yeah and yeah and and then i can scroll through some videos but the the girls are definitely living on a device are, are your kids doing any social media or is it all just connecting live with their friends my kids That's for do both a of lot you. of social media yeah my kids are on TikTok and, or no, they're more on Insta than on TikTok. Okay. Yeah. And I do and it so I can kind of know like what's going on a little bit. Okay. Spike. Um, you know, it's funny. Ryan was, I've raised two kids and one was pre-social media. Ryan was pre-social media and Darby is coming up in the heart of social media as cultural, you know, as a cultural norm. You know, Bob, you talked about how the the girls both know full well TikTok and they videos and they scroll and their their little brain chemistry is changing. And Ryan was spared that. She was already, you know, through that before it became so prevalent. Darby was brought up in the in the midst of it. But that being said, Darby, you know, had this ability to interact virtually when COVID hit. Mm-hmm. And I think right. her, I think her ability, their, their ability to to zoom all their friends and to zoom with the classroom, and to zoom with their teachers, was the reason that they didn't collapse during COVID and during the isolation. So I think you know, for all the all the hemming and hawing and, and the cursing we do about social media and its impact on my kids, they were versed and yeah. probably insulated from the isolation that so many kids suffered from. So well, I can't it really, would be you know, it would be like a. Good. a it would be like my parents going, I didn't have a computer. You don't need a computer. And, and it, like, whatever right, the, yeah. whatever the yeah. norm is today, we can't change it. No, you, know, you can't right, exactly. Right. You gotta, you gotta surf, yeah. surf the waves yeah. that are coming in, man. Mm. Yeah. You gotta, it, you know, and well, more, I, it's I, funny. You mentioned dinner time. You mentioned dinner time when people like, you know, oh, I, let me wonder who that was. 
you know, we, we don't wonder anything anymore. We know every, we know everything. Every answer yeah. is right there waiting for us. Exactly. Well, you know, I remember, um, you know, when our kids and, and, and Darby was part of this too, right? When, when COVID first hit and they were on school on zoom for six hours a day. And I remember mm -hmm. like halfway through that first year having a, like a, a 90 minute zoom call for something. And I got off and I was like, oh my God, how do they do it? And they've been doing it now for like five months and they did it for another year after that, you know, yeah. one zoom call after another, after another, after another. And that's got to change your brain a little bit, but you know, on the other, yeah. the, the flip side, like you were mentioning Spike and, and Bob too, Finn had his first girlfriend over Zoom. You know, that was, that was, she was, she lives in Wisconsin. And, you know, oh. he. Oh, so a lovely, a lovely, a lovely Thai girl from Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, exactly. No, but he fell hard for this little girl and they were online together for hours. I mean, oh, like wow. I come downstairs wow. and he'd be like, tap, tap, tapping away, or, you know, they watch movies together, you know, they would, you know, do the online. Yeah. 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 They'd connect and they'd, they'd have a group of, of friends watch a movie together and then they could, they could comment in the, you know, in their, you know, little. Right. The chat right. Box, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's chat the other box, thing. Thanks. Commenting in the chat box is a, is a big thing these days. Like my son, even Andrew, if he's watching a game, he's on Twitter or some other place where everybody's chatting about what they're seeing. Um, were they yeah. dating? When you say dating, well, puppy love, you know, on a Zoom call, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, he's, he's yeah. to this day has never seen her in real life. He's, you know, they're 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 not so much anymore because she kind of dumped him. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> She no, we'll said, edit you know, that out. Well, no, you know, no, she, she, she actually decided she wasn't sure if she likes boy, boys or girls, and he's like, okay, that's good. You know, you know, he really, really liked her though, and um, and I can't, you, you can't get mad at that. You know, she's no, she's right, right, finding out who no. she is. Um, so welcome but, to um, my life. Yeah, by, right? yeah, Mike, I'll let you get to your obvious response to that. But we will come to a time, hang on, let me move this. Uh, we will come to a time soon where that girlfriend might be artificial intelligence. Right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> that, just, that is wild. But before we know it, I think. We're here. Crazy. There. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, my youngest... Uh, my youngest child, I'm, I'm, I'm in the alphabet wars. I'm fighting the alphabet war. Um, but I'm on the right team. I'm on the, I'm, I'm on team alphabet. Um, our youngest doesn't know, you know, they, we went from she to they really quick. And now we're going from they to he, I think, I, you know, I think we are a, with Darby. Yeah. You know, and I don't know. It's funny. We, we have, and Bob, you, you've already heard this before more. You may not have, but. We've got um, three members of our family who are non-binary, um, or at mm -hmm. least they used to be. One is now fully. Remember Kayla, my my yes. cousin with with yeah. no legs and one arm. Well, that's yeah. now Kay, and they've had transition oh, cool. surgery. <laughs> yeah, um, and so we've had kind of a primer for for how to feel and how to interact, and the, the bottom line for us. And I think I, I, I'm sure it wouldn't be any different for anybody of, of you guys is, yeah. you know, I want my kid to be happy. Exactly. And I, I imagine that there, I, I imagine people have always felt this unsecure and unsure about themselves and just lived miserably and unhappily and unsure for their entire life. And the fact now that kids don't have to do that, kids can take some, yeah. kids can take some chances and, 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 and try some options and evolve through what makes them happy. And that's really all well, that's I give so, a shit about is that my kids yeah, I mean, likes themselves the thing, and, and yeah. I, I was just gonna say, you know, you know, I personally am grateful for, for Darby that, you know, they're growing up in your house, you know, instead of 
instead yeah, of a small yeah, town. Houses. Another one. There, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Try that in a yeah, small yeah. town. I told Bob I want to do a parody. Try that in a ball gown, right? <laughs> yeah. See, you want to watch? You want to watch? The, yeah. Want to watch people's freaking heads explode? Yeah. yeah. Jason Aldean yeah. in a ball gown and talk about how what yeah. it's like to be a, a person of of question in a small town. Good luck, buddy. Yeah. Oh, I have fought more yeah. wars this week. I know we're not going to get political, but I spent the entire weekend. Hold on. Clearing Hold on. my Facebook <clears throat> friends. We're, uh, we're twenty four minutes yeah. in. That was a longest wait for you to get. That was a long break. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's people are just look. I mean, you know, I said this in the pre-show. America is being divided by a nine-inch doll. You know, that's how that's how screwed up this country is. A, yeah. a nine-inch well, plastic doll is divided. I and, assume and, you and there's Barbie, two movies released. Right? I mean, Barbie. Yeah. Okay. It's funny. Two movies released. Two major movies released. And the one about nuclear annihilation didn't get as much flack as one about a plastic doll. <laughs> oh, that's up a really wing. good point. That's a really good you know, point. No, nobody's, nobody's got a problem with nuclear annihilation and celebrating Oppenheimer. But God forbid Barbie wow. about the, the male-female roles in our society, the patriarchy and matriarchy. God forbid. Oh, my God. All right, I'm so watching I'm, you know, these people's heads explode. Yeah, I'm yeah. unaware. So I don't even know there's a controversy yet because I've been watching YouTube and TikTok with six and eight year olds for four days. So I'm literally unplugged. <laughs> All I knew is they wanted to see Barbie and they're going. Uh, and that's all I know. So I only know it from a six year old's perspective. I can't even imagine well, what's the controversy about Barbie. Well, it's, it's PG 13. Um, you should know that before your oh. six and eight year olds go. So make that, let, help that make your decision. Keith and Leanne always read about that before they go and then I'm they sure. have oh, they're no. going to have a talk about anything yeah. you didn't understand yeah your 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 granddaughter is throwing great hands i got no oh. worries about yes. the parenting your, your your grandkids are getting it's you know i mean everybody we look we look for reasons to be offended so we the, wait a minute the offense divisive you know yeah but the offense you know, is I, that it's pg-13 and barbie does stuff oh no no oh no it. that's no. that's not the, that's not the beginning of the offense go ahead more i'm sorry Good. Well, no, I was just, I was kind of surprised because I just saw it this afternoon with Bridget and a friend of hers. And um, I can't even think of a single swear word they said or anything. So I don't it, even know why. It was, so, so was, I, I haven't seen it. So I'm speaking of this just of Darby did see it the first night with a bunch of friends. They dressed up in pink and they dressed up in, oh, yeah. in um, Bridget did too. you know, in, 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 in Barbie and, and, Actually, Darby went as, you know, surfer Ken. So, nice. you know, it's what, that's my world. Um, <laughs> and and Darby, Darby came home with the assessment that it really, it does a brilliant job of addressing societal differences in the male and female roles in society. Maura, would you say that's yeah. true? Absolutely. They, they, the the but, traditional but, roles. But, but, yeah, the pushback from conservative media. And it's like, you would not believe the tidal wave of pushback from social <laughs> media today. Okay. Conservative media, not social media. So um, give me know, a specific. It, 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 attack, it attacks the patriarchy. Wow. It makes men look like villains. It makes, wow. you know, it makes, it, 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 it highlights gender fluidity. It highlights trans. It's, you know, I mean, it, it's, it celebrates every boogeyman the right has enlisted in the culture wars to divide the nation. Hmm. They're all in there. Well, if I were making you know? this movie, that would sound like a great way to get free publicity. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. The funny thing is, I didn't even know until I got home and I said, okay, now I'm going to read a couple of reviews. I didn't even know that there was a trans actor in the movie watching it. So mm -hmm. if, unless you're looking, you really, there's, there's, I, I mean, I, there, I didn't see anything to be offensive. So basically, Bob, just to, <laughs> to, yeah, just, give, it, give us, the movie is about, Barbie has, a, has an ex existential crisis about, her role in the world, right? So that makes her end up going into the real world uh, and seeing the real world is much different than she thought it was because she thought that so because this is, Barbie oh, was- oh, yeah, A yeah. little like Pleasantville where there's a cartoon world and a real world? No, it's all live action. And, and I, live I'll action. tell you what, okay. if, if, if the movie is, uh, nominated for anything, I think it's going to be set design because it's really that part is really cool. It's really like yeah, watching Bar a Barbie. Barbie, Barbie, yeah, house. Barbie world. Barbie world is a Bar yeah. Barbie world's a country, right? Basically, yes, and Barbie leaves right, right, right. Barbie world to and en enter the normal society 
And Ken realizes yeah. that men in Barbie world are getting a rough, shitty deal. So that, you know, that's part of the yeah. storyline, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. And I, it, that's why, that's why people are upset because, because Ken, Ken is kind of like, you know, she, she sort of takes him for granted. And then, and then he realizes, wait, in the real world, I'm the boss, I'm in charge. Uh -huh. And, and then he brings that back to Barbie world and it becomes King world or Ken world. And so, you know, without telling too much more about it, but you know, it's a fun, silly movie. And it's like, it's not, it's not going to change your world. It's fun. Mm. It's poppy pink and green and great sets and you know margot robbie is gorgeous and so is ryan gosling he, he's actually really funny he's he's really funny yeah. and not bad to look at either so that's that's my so, so more <laughs> so you so you've seen you've seen the movie and, and yeah. there's there's a map of the world in the movie right drawn like oh, in crayon yes. right um, yeah. and, and did you notice the Chinese propaganda in the map of the world? Only because that was so, the one so, bit of the movie that I had heard about. Yeah. 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 I don't think I would there's have like a, nine, nine, da nine dashes in the China Sea in this, in this crayon drawn map in Barbie's world. And Ted Cruz is having yeah. a cow because it's promoting Chinese propaganda of, of Chinese ownership of the China Sea. You know, it's like, I'm like, oh my God, can you just. Can you not? Yeah. Can you just stay yeah. home when it's hot and cold and don't abandon your dog in winter and you know, all this stupid stuff? Jesus. Exactly. Well, exactly. I, all right. I've got a little bit of a different view because, you know, I describe myself as a radical centrist um, because I don't really, uh, I don't believe either party or either camp or tribe, liberal or conservative, is doing anything really productive. Um, in other words, I, I, there's these differences of opinion and conservatives wanting to slow down uh, progress and progressives wanting to progress, progress. And the balance is how fast you, and, and you know, and, and, and it's a pendulum that swings back and forth. Sometimes you lose three feet. Sometimes you gain four feet. And it's just the way sometimes I always you lose saw 50 it as, years. Sometimes you lose <laughs> 50 years. Hold on. Boom. Right. Thank Salt you, my friend. Through. Yeah. But, <laughs> But I call myself a radical centrist because um, since either side, and I know how Spike hates the both sides-ism, since either side spends most of its time bad-mouthing the other side, um, it feels like that's all caused by our current media environment because it's the business model that works is agitating people. So uh, right. in terms of this movie, I'm going to guess that everything that was done to get publicity, literally from selling out of the color pink at certain hardware stores and then getting a news story written about it, to trolling the right, so the right would turn around and troll the left for you. I, I mean, yeah. isn't that how the world works right now? And, um, and so I always feel like we're, gosh, we're so easy to manipulate. Right. We, we were talking yeah. on the air today about the about the movie, and I and I and I dove right into the blue trap, and Jack Stein's my <laughs> one air partner, and he said, "No, no," he said. So, for example, Charlie Kirk's this conservative commentator, and he was it Charlie Kirk? No, it was Ben Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, um, he's appalled by the movie, so he takes a bunch of Barbies and he melts them with a blowtorch. He Oppenheimer's Barbie, right? A forty-five minute <laughs> um, review, right? And then he predicts how it's going to be the, it's going to tank after one week. Right. And I said, well, save that take because next week when it's still in one movie in America. And Jack's like, no, 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 no. Right. He doesn't believe that. He wants you to tell everybody next week how wrong he was. So yes. He'll own your brain next week. He'll own your brain next week too. And I'm yes. like, Jack, thank you for seeing, seeing like Bob, like you did. Thanks for seeing the bigger picture. You know, I just, I, 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 I am, I am easily outraged. So if too. you, if we buy into that premise, <laughs> And the dog is clearly freaking out too. Um, if we buy into that premise that that now we're kind of predictable as a society, and we spend yeah. a lot of time trolling each other, um, I guess what I'm curious about, and I wanted to ask this even as part of the kids' question, is where is all this going? Because 
one thing I know from, you know, having been around a few decades is that things are always changing. And mm -hmm. so wherever we're in now is going to look like a fad someday. It's not going to be the same. <laughs> in whatever five these years, are years. the good old days that's what you're saying these are the good old oh, days no. for our kids oh no oh, no scary thought oh, it so, really is so man. where does this go does society have like you know remember we're classic rockers so we remember when uh art and culture and rock took a turn for standing up for peace and love and uh and and music was the inspiration for people to be kind to each other. Uh, we didn't do a great job hanging on to that into our 50s and 60s, but we used to be the peace and love generation. Um, is there a fertile ground for some of our kids or some of this generation to go, uh, you know, all right, enough of this. It's not accomplishing anything. Uh, and, then, and then could there be a groundswell? Oh. Because media follows audiences, okay? Media media wants an audience. If audience wanted something different, media would be different. Yep, yep. I don't. I, think, I hope. I don't. I, unless something really changes, unless these kids that are coming up, like your grandkids' age, because I think my kids are already kind of set Program. in their ways. <laughs> <laughs> we try to be open-minded about a lot of stuff you know but but you I, gave I them think, good values i know that you, that i know that you and I gave them great values. Yeah. definitely we did yes but i kind of think it's gonna is i think we're gonna continue to do this i well, i just i i see i see the 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 blue and red just getting the divide going wider and wider and it's kind well, of sad it, it is but if history teaches us anything all we need is a common enemy that's and that's the only yeah. thing that ever does heal, will heal it be china or enemy. or will it be aliens yeah. this time it'll be, it'll oh, be china. aliens Within aliens will bring years, the whole aliens. world together <laughs> my prediction yeah, well, the, 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 I, I i seriously think we are a trailer park that aliens don't stop at Aliens just come by Earth, <laughs> lock their doors, roll up their windows, and fly right by. You know, they used to visit here, but not anymore. I'm a firm believer on that one. Um, yeah, it's 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 terrible. And Bob, I, I wish you were, I wish you weren't so smart. I wish you were a little more dim. Um, it's I'm, I'm with Maura too, man. I don't see how we, as a as a society, how we as a culture, a country, mend the fence. You know, without without a hurricane coming through or a natural disaster or an earthquake where California drops into the sea. Well, that wouldn't even do it either because the middle of the country, like, great, good riddance. Satan did it for all you gay people. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Uh, although, although I'm, I'm of the Star Trek mentality. I really do think we're going to, we're not stupid enough to, to end it all. I, I firmly believe that we will invent a car that runs on bubble gum or whatever else, you know, that new, that propulsion and the the dilithium crystal will be discovered. Somebody's going to eat a mushroom and come up with a dilithium crystal. You mean we need more people like fine. Elon Musk, is what you're saying? Well, no. And oh my God, I told the worst <laughs> joke of all time today on air. I told, I yeah. can't believe if I have a job tomorrow, I'll be so surprised. Okay. I oh, said good. Twitter really it. blew it. You, yeah. you, you heard Twitter's changing their logo, right? They're going from the blue bird to the uh, uh, next. I said, Elon Musk, man, you know, he's got smart people. He blew the first rule of marketing. He took an iconic image, right? And he, he made a drastic change and said, you got to make a gradual change. You don't go from the Tweety Bird to, um, to an X. You go Tweety Bird, Iron Eagle of the Third Reich, and then to the X. <laughs> you know, give, give, him a nice, give him a nice soft transition as you take him down the far right rabbit hole of fashion. And Jack's like, oh, my God. Yeah, that startled him. So yeah, yeah uh, uh, I hope I hope I have a job. That is funny. Oh. Uh, it's outrageous, <laughs> Mike, but it's all you. It's very funny. I, I look. Um, Elon is one of my pet uh, things that I like to troll people with because of all human beings on the planet, uh, he has done more to help us with climate change than any single human being by being business smart 
and creating a product that no one else said could be created and that none of our normal capitalist uh, companies, none of our car companies or the or big oil or government could actually empower this to happen. He did it without, you know, subsidies at first, without anything. He And he almost bankrupted several times. Are we talking almost Tesla like, here? Yeah, we're talking Tesla. Okay. And I've got to tell you. want to tell him so. more or should I? You I'm a fan no, I? I, I want to re, I want to <laughs> remind you of your own argument back in the day about the batteries. I'm right? sorry, we're having technical difficulties. We cannot hear more <laughs> right now. I have no idea what you're about. To. Go ahead. Well, it's <laughs> no, because that's uh, not no, you. It, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't have one, a, but I would like to get a non Tesla yeah. electric. <laughs> okay. Uh, because of his politics, uh, which, by the way, is all trolling anyway. But uh, what did I say back in the day? Was I against electric cars? I wouldn't be surprised. No, you weren't against electric cars, but you were saying they weren't the savior that everybody was, you know, you know, saying they were because of all of the materials first that went into. Yeah. I may be making this up, but all the materials no, that no, no. went Sounds into like to making the batteries. And then once the batteries were no longer useful what do we do with them then i yeah. think yeah, you're, you're i heard from mr rivers yeah, there yeah you, <laughs> yeah, you said you were, you were swapping one you were swapping one ecological disaster for another right so yeah i mean we have to innovate and and that is how human beings have always dug ourselves out of the big mm -hmm. hole we always borrow money to put ourselves in and uh one way is to inflate our way out of our debt Another way is to uh, create a new, slightly better problem. When I got sober, it was like, well, I've traded in a really bad problem for a classier problem. And coming up with an energy grid, doing more solar, doing all of the things, changing mining practices, and even coming up with better, better battery technology. The thing that'll make that happen is if there's a big pile of fucking money in it. And that's yeah. really... That's why Elon Musk was able to succeed because he cared about money. As far as Twitter goes, I think he's having a ball with it and doesn't care uh, how, how That's exactly much. Exactly. I think you're spot on. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's turned think into it, an ego fight. Yeah. I think tanking would be one of the greatest marketing exercises for him of all time. And he doesn't mm -hmm. care if he loses everything. Well, he's for, lost his, half, his, right? his investment, his investment yeah. in Twitter. Yeah, because he borrowed it. Don't declare bankruptcy. Our system is set up so somebody can come in and buy the most um, uh, useful and bankrupt. innovative. And, and he'll People will lose money, but not not him. And it will well, no, turn he borrowed it. He'll write it off. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't even think so. You all assume that, that having it worthless is a failure. But if you still have a quarter of a trillion dollars in net worth, um, you got a little wiggle room. And well, I'm not uh, saying he's going to go bankrupt. I'm just saying Twitter, he's going to. He's going to shit the brand, as they say. Do you think sure. Threads is going to going to uh, overpass Twitter, usurp the numbers, and you think? Uh, I, I I wouldn't know, it, but I, I know Twitter, this about Twitter's, Twitter's a yeah. uh, go ahead, Mike. No, nope. Twitter's a noun. Twitter's a noun and a verb now. It's like band aids, right? You can't. It's like if somebody bought band aids and all of a sudden, you know, what we're going to go to get rid of the people and make them clean. Yeah. It's just how dirty band aid. And eventually people are going to get right. sick from dirty Band-Aids. They're going to just stop using them all together until somebody else buys it back and rebrands it as Band-Aid and puts the white bird back up on the blue shield, gets rid of the eagle and the X, and we move back to right. where we were. Maura, let me give my answer, which is much more boring than Spike's. <laughs> um, name the two top soda companies. Pepsi and Coke. Mr. 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 Pibb name, and Phantom. Name oh, the sorry. two top fast food restaurants. McDonald's, McDonald's and, and Burger. Yeah. I don't know. Probably whichever you did. Yeah. <laughs> In almost all categories, there are a couple of leaders fighting it out for dominance. And then there's the RC Cola and the also Rans. And when mm -hmm. Elon Musk bought this I, and, and said, oh, free speech and reinstated accounts, I figured, oh, he's going to be the Rupert Mur Murdoch of social media chat platforms and he's going to take it purposely in this direction and then someone like mark zuckerberg who really only a year ago was responsible for teenage girls committing suicide and now he's the savior um 
you know, he's going to do right. the friendlier version, which is how he's branded it. And they'll probably both survive in five, 10 years from now. This will all be ancient history because the news cycle is so yeah. short. That's my final thought. You're probably right. Yeah. I have right. no idea. I can sure convince people that I think I'm right. <laughs> the gift. All right, you guys, this has been a real pleasure. And uh, Maura, thank you for joining us. Really. Thank you. Uh, and thank you um, very much for inviting me into your, uh, to the production guys, Dave. And oh, oh, is wonderful. Uh, boy. Thank you for. Oh, oh, Matthew Mike and Mike, Mike, Mike Morrow Matthew, and Matthew sorry. who put this together yeah, yeah. behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, uh, it was a pleasure. And I hope we get to do it again. A little pop up podcast. If you're interested in knowing more, go to BobRivers.com and please listen to Jack and Spike on Cairo between noon and three. They have a good show. And if Spike's got someone talking some sense, people will as well. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> nah, you guys, you guys are good rock. I'm talking for robots. And Maura, uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Anything to promote or just take care of your family? Uh, and uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm working on some stuff. I'll talk to you about it offline, maybe. Okay. But I'm having a good life. Let's think All that. Right. You <laughs> are the best. And podcasting, <laughs> I think, would be awesome. Uh, as soon as you get rid of our ugly mugs, numbers go way <laughs> up. It's going to be great. All right. Thank you, Maura. Thank you, Spike. Right. It's Bob Rivers. Thanks for being with us. Email anytime, show at bobrivers.com.